Transmitting high atop of Florida's peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 196. Overcrowding in jails, yes or no? That is the question we will be examining today. As always, you can get in contact with us on RaiderCop.com. There you can hear all our episodes from 1 to 196. Or you can go to Raider Cop Nation, get more information, updates, and more of connection with the nation of Raider Cop. We are also on social media. I invite you to come aboard. MeWe, Wimpkin, Clubhub, Gab, Parlor, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Rumble. All you got to do is type in Raider Cop, Raider Cop Nation, or Raider Cop Podcast. We're definitely in all those social medias that I just discussed by clicking in our name. Number 45, better known as Donald J. Trump, will be making a speech at CPAC, and that is on Sunday, February 28th. If you want to see it live, because you know and I know that Bolshevik states of woke will be, of course, making sure that the masses in the United States do not hear him or see him. But it will be featured on Rumble. You can click on there and catch it live. Of course, Newsmax as well. And other conservative outlets but remember each and every day they're trying to get us so what are we doing about it well we're organizing like all other conservatives out there why are we well everybody has their own individual reason for me my parents left communism to come to this country taught me the values of freedom, and today I have great pleasure in resisting and fighting the Bolshevik states of woke. You might have your own reasons, but whatever they are, if they're in line with fighting that Bolshevik element, then I am with you. And speaking of that, you can go to RaiderCopNation.com and there's a section there called Hearties, like in heart. And there you can click on there and there's all kinds of resources for guys like me and you. From browsers to VPNs and much more. It is growing slowly because... Today we live in a society where we don't know who is who. So, but I do know one thing that is for sure, and that is the Word of God, and we are going to discuss it today. Get your scriptures and turn your books to the book of James 127. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. James 127. You can hear more about this verse that I've read 
on what is now called the Word segment, but in May, it will be turned into a wall Monday. Less than 30 minutes, the powerful Word of God for your spiritual life, because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And today we are talking about overcrowding in jails, and the answer is what you want it to be. But it is a question. Is there overcrowding? Yes or no? In today's society of the Bolshevik states of woke, there are all kinds of reforms. Bail reform, prison reform, everybody reform. We saw rioters this summer, the summer of 2020, and many went to jail, but the charges were overturned and thrown out for hundreds of thousands. Where do those numbers go? They go into the coffers. They go in favor of jails. Imagine that. You get a profit out of something that you never really had a, an expense on. Why? What are you talking about, Alpha? None of this makes any sense. Well, let's just come up with a hypothetical number. Let's say I have 10,000 arrests during the Summer of Love 2020. And of, of those 10,000, those cases were thrown out. District attorneys, state attorneys refused to press charges. But I have 10,000 new books, bookings in my jail. So I can use that for a bigger budget. So in the times of defund the police, you don't think that funny numbers will be benefiting corrections, do you? They wouldn't do that. I'm sure that uh, those conscious legislators would make sure and say, if those are arrests that came into our facilities, was the charges were dropped, then... Other than processing, we had no real expense. So we're going to have to curl tail the number. Or, wink and a nod, we can use the number for our advantage. What's the answer? Is overcrowding up or down? We'll take a look at that on today's episode 196. Time for the short bus. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the main event. Episode 196, Overcrowding in Jails, Yes or No? That's the question that we pose for you today. And you, of course, will answer it based on the jurisdiction that you live. But today we're also going to look at, in a world of defunding police, we're looking mostly at jails, even though we might throw in some prison numbers because that's how the Bureau of Uh, Justice of Statistics puts these numbers together. We'll explain that. The Institute of Justice will explain how they do it. But in the world of the Bolshevik states of woke, it'd be a shame if they overlooked this and gave a sheriff's office, which also runs police functions, more money than they may need. Or they stick it to them and say, your numbers have dropped, so you're going to get less. 
which would play into the narrative of defund. So we will explore that. Will we have concrete answers? No, because they are jurisdictions that have different numbers for different places. But the overall theme of the Bolshevik world will definitely dictate the politics on how people will get funding. As we said, jail numbers come in for public consumption, the data, through the Institute of Justice. This institute that is on our show notes publication was published January 25th of this year. Now, these are not the last defined numbers, and I'll explain. These are what each jail in the United States or prison has reported as their official headcounts for the year of 2020, based on population levels of every day, weeks, months, and of course, it turns into the year. Now, there are going to be breakdowns in that as to who was booked and released, who did time, who got convicted, and it, it that takes a little longer. But we're going to look at the numbers that are available currently. First number that comes up is, and these are numbers, again, are going to be uh, bunched up together with prisons and jails, and then I'll separate them. But the overall view for, let's let's take a look at 2019, uh, 2,115,000 people were placed into prisons and jails. From that 2.115 mil, 1.4 were prisoners, and 758,419 came from jails. Now, in 2020, that number is going to change considerably. The drop in those numbers, because I'm not going to bore you with tell, just giving you numbers here, is 320,000 less. So, if I had to ask you the question, overcrowding in jails, yes or no, your response would be, based on what I just said, no. There's a deficit of 300,000. Now let's look at some more 2019 numbers so we can compare them to 2020. Overall, prison and jails are down 14% from in 2019 and 21% down in 2020 if we were to compare that to a high in 2008, where population levels reached 2.3 million. About the 300 million that we're talking about that doesn't exist today. So which states are coming in with less numbers? So that gives us a little bit of a more overall picture. Well, you've got Connecticut with a 24 points down, 24 percentages down on detention facilities in the state of Connecticut. Massachusetts is down 23 percent in its jails and prisons, followed up by Colorado, the marijuana state, that is down to 21 percent. So, if I was a detective prying eye, these are three states that I would keep my eye on for 2022 when budgets came out. Those corrections budgets should be less. Once again, Connecticut's down 24, Massachusetts 23, and Colorado 21. So, the rating 2020 was 500. And 49 residents per 
100,000 were going to jail. So 100,000 residents, 549 of them, would end up going to a correctional facility. Well, that's down also, because in 2019, it was 644 residents to the 100,000. So there's a difference of close to 100. You don't think that the Bolshevik states would ask for more money, do you? Because the numbers are way down. So what happened with the riot in the Summer of Love 2020, where everybody looted through rocks, painted floors, beat up cops, killed innocent people, and voiced their concern through hatred and violence. Many, many were jailed in these riots. Of course, numbers are sketchy. Don't forget that also the Democratic Party and our elitist Hollywood people uh, were looking for donations to get those poor people out of jail. Many state attorneys and district attorneys around the country decided after a very, very brief session of thinking that they would drop the charges. Forget all the looting and destruction and everything they did. We'll just put that to the side. They were expressing themselves. So that means that all those people that got arrested, that's a wash. Yeah, they came in. Yeah, they stayed for a cup of coffee. We opened up the back door and let them out. Some of them would even get arrested two, three, and maybe even four times in one day. Doesn't matter. They've got some big donors behind their district attorneys and state attorneys that are going to let them go anyway. So, the summer of love of 2020, we can't really look for that data as hard data. That's what we'll call wishy-washy data. Not going to be able to really use that one. But remember, that's the era that, or the, or the sector of time where the summer of love was born. And the defunct people arose in the Bolshevik states of woke. Now, the hard numbers, as I said, they'll follow up. They'll probably come out in 2022. Of course, we'd have to wait about 10 more months. But those hard numbers are going to come out. And based on what I've read so far, I can almost assure you they are also going to be way down all across the country. And that brings me to a moment of a thought, a moment of clarity, that during the summer of love 2020, we had COVID-19 hysteria, while Fauci Fulci was telling everybody, don't wear a mask, wear a mask, put on two masks, one mask, put the mask upside down. I'm going to the baseball game without a mask. You need a mask. I don't need a mask. We all need a mask. While he was doing that, prison and jail officials were in such a panic, they opened up the door and let everybody run out. Well, not necessarily. But a lot of hardcore criminals disappeared. Sheriffs around the country all of a sudden started negotiating these positions because they have care, custody, and control of all these individuals. They're going to have to let them go because COVID is out of control. We did an episode about COVID in that specific episode in jails and and correctional facilities. And we said jails have a fiduciary duty to keep criminals in prisons and jails not spring them out because they can't control something in a society that has to have the ability of care, custody, and control. 
So if they can't control it, that means they can't perform their jobs. It's going to be a very tough budget year for our good, loving, correctional people. But nevertheless, thousands poured out to the streets only to cause havoc all over the streets. Back when we did our other episode, and I'll attach that to the show notes once I find it, that episode we talked about correctional facilities need resources, not the key to open up the gates. What are the resources? Well, more medical people, the ability to screen prisoners and inmates, rapidly to determine whether they are exposed or not exposed, temporary housing during that testing stage, and plenty of plenty of money because anything that has a medical in it is quite expensive. But no, too difficult. Local and state authorities are not interested in that. We'll just open up the gates and let them out. That's all. They'll come back. Maybe they won't. But uh, your plan, Alpha, is way too expensive. Hire more doctors, nurses, sophisticated equipment to measure temperatures, isolation cells. If in case somebody has a symptom, or test is positive. That's all very, very complicated. How can we do six feet in a jail? No, no, no. This is preposterous. It's better just open the gates and let them out. Care, custody, and control corrections has of criminal element that are arrested by law enforcement. They can't do care They're thinking about getting rid of custody, and we know control is not there either. So I'm starting to wonder, what kind of future can corrections really have? Starting to look a little dismal, my friends. And all those corrections people making all that money, a lot of them are retiring Look at the city of New York, the New York City Department of Corrections, having forced overtime and officers working 24 to 30 hours a shift. You heard that right. 24 to 30 hours a shift. How can you even be alert enough to watch hardened criminals after a given amount of time. This is crazy, but so is the mayor of the city of New York that once came out on an interview and said, we're going to combat this, this is not uh, logical, and did nothing. It actually got worse. The union has protest, and nothing seems to happen. The reason nothing's happened is because they're top-heavy right now. As people leave, they don't want to hire new ones because could it be that the new budgets are going to come in way under projection? Hmm, this was the stock market. I wouldn't invest in officers having more money in their wallets. What a shame, because a lot of these officers believe in all these Bolshevik positions, bail reform, prison reform. They were rooting and hollering, loving every minute of it. You don't think that this is going to affect their careers, do you? Wow. Wouldn't that be a bummer that the same cause that you cheered for, all of a sudden, now you're a victim? Well, you won't be alone. You'll be in pretty good company because there was a lot of unions that supported Uncle Joe, you know, 46. And he said he wasn't going to 
stop fracking and all that other stuff. We were going to keep the oil industry full force and in business. Unions were proud. Their chest came out, AFC, CIO, whatever their initials are. And Joe didn't live up to the promise. First day on the job, he cra- he grabbed one of his crayons, wrote his name on it. 10,000 people were out of work. Then those 10,000 led into thousands and thousands of more that were connected to that interest industry. Uncle Joe recently had a report that came out on unemployment. Almost 900,000 under Joe. This man knows how to come up with some real ugly numbers. But I'm sure that all these people that voted for him, they must know this is just a rough start. Joe's going to get a lot better. He's going to gather strength. You'll see. You'll see. This is the beginning. We're going to make Bolshevik states great again. So, where do we go from here? Well, wherever your local community is, You might care, or you might not, but if you do, and I think you should pay attention, because this is going to lead right into defunding the police theory. You know, the wink and the nod, like Uncle Joe said, no, 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 we're not defunding anything, we're reallocating money. That's what he said. Man is brilliant, brilliant, worth every freaking dime. U.S. taxpayers pay this imbecile. Reallocating money. Not defunding them. Don't get that wrong. Okay? As they play with words. Just like ticket lawyers. I can get all those tickets removed. Just give me $500. But the tickets for 50 bucks. <laughs> you want it off your record? Be ashamed if it stayed on your record. Yep. Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe. Mafia Joe, he, uh, he's had a little bit of a rough start. Now, getting back to corrections, for some reason, corrections has always been a little bit more liberal in criminal justice than all the other law enforcement agencies. Maybe because uh, the re- rehabilitation aspect, counselors, social workers, all those great topics. They're not really into that rah rah, get them, handcuff them, book them down on stuff. They're more of the civil side of things. It'd be a shame if they lost all those millions of dollars in funding. I mean, corrections is a dirty business. You never know when all of a sudden all the police departments want to go out and do mass arrest. Where would they bring them? They'd have to bring them to jail. If so, imagine this scenario. We cut your budget. We slice it in half. You are a force to close sections of the jail, if not other jails. Close them. Put them in mothballs. But then one day... The Great Awakening happens in law enforcement, and they start doing mass arrest. Oh, gosh, look at there. Corrections doesn't have enough funding. Their budgets, is, their budgets were reallocated, like Joe said. Now they have less than a jail. It's going to get awfully cramped in these cells. So... The answer is that this is just a part of the hypocrisy of the left. Double talking. They say one thing, but they really mean another. They're not friends of law enforcement, and they're definitely not friends of corrections. The unfortunate part, a lot of people in corrections believe that they're part of the team. No, they're not. And every day, more and more, Officers that work in correctional facilities will be put out of their job. Of course, we'll never really read that 
in a newspaper in America. You never really hear that in a news or, or television report in America because that would be disinformation, even though you could look up the numbers in the, the Bureau of the Institute of Justice that basically every correctional facility in America has to report their numbers. You don't think that all these correctional facilities colluded together in reporting less numbers than they really have to cause disinformation. Could be now. It could be. Welcome to the Bolshevik states of America where nothing really makes sense, where the truth becomes a lie and the lie becomes the truth. The wacky world of as you pay more and you get ripped off of your hard-earned money from your wallet, you're told you're more compassionate. You're helping others. You're helping establish equality. And you feel better. And you walk a lot lighter because you have less money in your pockets. Thanks to Uncle Joe. That is always convenient and quick to relieve us of anything of value, including our guns. But we'll get on that a little later. We have many, many more stories with Uncle Joe on that one. Overcrowding in jails, yes or no? Based on the numbers that I've told you, the statistics that I've told you, that answer would be no. But I can assure you, my friends, as the sky will be shiny in the morning, blue skies with a nice, bright sun, there'll be some agencies that said, we we went up, we went up, our numbers went up, we're going to need more money. You don't think the summer of love would have anything to do with that? Maybe, maybe not. What a shame that the media won't be looking into those things. No, they're not interested in that story. And don't you dare trying to post anything on social uh, media. We won't allow that disinformation. In fact, we might even demonetize you. (laughs) Don't mess with us, buddy. The Bolshevik states of woke, we can put you out of business. Be a shame that your business burned up like that. Uncle Joe, the mafia Don. That's the world that we live in, folks. And you as Joe and Mary Six Pack need to start waking up to all these little facts. Today at your jail, tomorrow at your police station, the following day at your airport, and the fourth day at your neighborhood, in your house, on your block. Wake up, folks, before it's too late. Up next, an episode that I truly want you to listen to. Thomas Swole, one of... uh, the most woke individuals in America, wisdom beyond imagination will be with us. We will talk on episode 197, Thomas Sowell, why we should listen. America should be listening to every word that Mr. Thomas Sowell tells us because we will be a smarter nation for it. I promise you. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Raider Cup Podcast. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, for the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike. And I'm out.